That diagram now has a lot of X's. How does that help us? What I want you to notice is that if I focus only on the triangle ABC, then I know all three of its angles in terms of X. And of course we know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. By the way, the same observation applies to the whole triangle. X, X, and 2X, and X, 3X. Now, I can use that knowledge to write up the following. X plus 2X plus 2X is equal to 180 degrees. And just to remind myself why I said that, I'm going to write there triangle A, B, C. And I'm going to leave it up to you to solve the problem from there. Time for you to try a few by yourself. Let's cross to Asunder and see what the students have to say. And now it's time for our last question in this lesson. And of course, it's from the lovely Candice. Candice, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Okay, awesome. So how, how's everything been going? It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. The math yes. is working out. It is. It's Girl, you are so lucky. You are so lucky. I'm still battling. But you know what? I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just willing to work. And you? We'll go with that. We'll yeah. go with that. Okay, okay. Candice, you go ahead and ask your question. What I saw there was that use congruent axioms to create more mathematics. Is that correct? Is it correct? That's exactly it. What I now want to do is I now want to show you how I can use the congruence axioms to prove the properties of quadrilaterals those same properties that we proved by means of transformations last year. Here we have a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. The opposite sides of the quadrilateral are parallel, a parallelogram. What we proved last year using transformations is that the opposite sides, A, D and B, C, are equal to each other. And we also proved that the opposite sides, A, B and D, C, are equal to each other. Similarly, we proved that the opposite angles A and C are equal and B and D are equal. Our challenge is to see if we can prove exactly the same thing using congruence. In order to use congruence, we need two triangles. I'm really only left with two choices. Either I join A and C, or I join B and D. Let's join A and C. I've created two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle ADC. I need three things in each of those two triangles to be equal to each other before I can prove that the two triangles are congruent. Well, I'm now going to take advantage of these parallel lines. This angle is equal to that angle, alternate angles, and the lines are parallel. Similarly, this angle is equal to this angle. Alternate angles and the lines that make them alternate are parallel. Two angles, there's only one congruence case that involves two angles. Angle, angle, corresponding side. But here I have it the side that's common to both triangles. Let's write that up. In triangle ABC and triangle. Now let's think about that. We went from the star to the B to the circle. From the star to the unmarked angle to the circle. C, D, A. Let's write it up. First thing, so now we're working ABC, we're in this triangle here. Let's start with the star, BAC. 
angle BAC equals, now I'm going to show you a cute trick, ACD equals alternate angle ACD and AB is parallel to DC. Remember, alternate angles aren't always equal, so we have to tell which parallel lines allowed us to make them equal or to say that they're equal. Let's keep going. BCA is equal to the alternate angle COD. CAD, sorry, CAD. Those two alternate angles are equal because of the other pair of parallel lines. AD is parallel to BC. Third thing to make the two triangles congruent, AC is common. Therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, reason, angle, angle, corresponding side. Now, I've said it several times, and I'm saying it again. We prove congruence for a reason. That is, we want to use what this helps us to know. This helps us to know that AB, therefore AB, is equal to CD. And what do we know? We know that AB and CD are opposite sides of a parallelogram. So we've proved that property. Also, BC, that's the, those two there, BC is equal to DA. I've proved that there. From this triangle, we can also conclude that the middle letter B is equal to the middle letter D. Angle B is equal to angle D. That proves that those two opposite angles are equal, which leaves us with that pair of opposite angles. And I'm going to argue that we've already shown they're equal. I'm going to leave it up to you to convince yourself that I'm right. And in the same way, we can prove all of the properties of all of the quadrilaterals that we proved using transformations last year. Time for you to try a few by yourself. In our next lesson, we're going to look at a related idea, similarity. Till next time. Well, guys, we've reached the end of this lesson, but before we head out, Candice, what you got to say, girl? We better make sure we understand these cases before we have to solve problems with them. I know, hey. I don't want to stress, but hey, have fun, be good, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.